What's going on guys, Victor be back with another Game Case Arcades video. This is it, last video, part three, finalizing the details, beautifying the arcade one up, and we're gonna knock this out today. Now off the bat, real quick, I've been very busy, personal work, and you know, I do this on the side and all that, so I've been very busy. I know it's been kind of a long thing to get the videos done, but Today we're gonna knock this out. I got a customer that really wants this thing, so we have to knock this thing out. Right now, real quick, I'm gonna take you again. I'm gonna talk behind the scenes because you guys like it like that. Let me show you real quick what we do with the power strips and what we're gonna do about the volume controller, the LED strips, and basically that's it. I think on this cabinet, I'm personally gonna be doing a four player setup, basically two player arcade and two NES controllers. This way it's a four player kind of game system. Let's go in deeper. So again, we got the back of the arcade one up. Real quick, first thing I always do is that we do screw down the power strip. Yes, you could do the whole measuring out the bottom of this. I do a kind of a ghetto way. Basically, four black screws. Make sure you don't puncture the actual plastic to this. Four black screws, this thing right here is not gonna move, okay? First thing again, we're gonna do real quick the power strip. So right now, I'm gonna have this set up to go right here on the edge. So we're gonna take our back of the arcade one up. I'm gonna basically flip it so then the letter isn't there. And basically we're gonna just kind of notch this out with either a file. I'm gonna use a file, honestly. I'm gonna notch out the file. Or I do have a um, grinder, sander kind of thing. So if you do have one of these, that's pretty much fast. I'm gonna do that. Basically I'm gonna notch out a little thing as close to the edge as possible just to make clearance for the wire. Again, just a quick dry fit. Just the white cord's gonna come out. I'm still kind of messing around with my controllers, but only the white cord is here. So we got our back of the arcade one up, little notch out for the wiring. My power strip is connected. Let's go into real quick doing the controller audio controller. Now the audio controller should be on player two side because right here you do have your volume switch, your power and the headphone jack is on the bottom. So as far as on player two side, we're gonna put it right there because the right side of this, there's nothing here. So it's gonna look just like that, but on the actual side of it. The only modification we need to do probably is to do to the face where we put our admin buttons. Sometimes you might have a gap Right now mine is levitating, it's not really set, but we are gonna do the same little notch here. And we're gonna put the controller right here. So again, once we have a flush, the control panel flush, there is a little bit of a gap that you could sneak the controller in. Again, we're gonna put the controller right here. Me personally, I would rather just kind of shave off a little bit, just to make sure we don't squish the wires. These wires, once you kind of squish them, you might break the insides of them. It's just way easier for you to lift up the control panel and we're just gonna trim this off a little bit. I'm gonna use the same machine. Be very careful with this. This is MDF, so you might, if you do chip it, you will probably chip it, but we're gonna go right against this like that. Using my little bench, we have then shaved it. We're all good here. We're gonna put this back, leaving the control panel up. We're gonna, you know, wash it down with a cloth later on. Control panel back, making sure this is all the way down, no wires in the way. We're flat down. We have a perfect thing here. We're gonna now go behind the arcade, grab our controller, and we are going to basically just fish it right on through. Pick it on up. Nice and straight, you wanna make sure your wires are straight. Again, I made a big enough thing. Didn't have to go that big, but now it's gonna be perfect. No kinks in the wire. To hold this controller in place, we are gonna use Velcro. I'm a big fan of Velcro. I don't like double-sided tape, only because it wears out. The Velcro, at least you could probably pull it out, swap it out, we're doing Velcro. Took our Velcro, stuck it on one side, keep the other side stuck to the controller. Make sure you clean your surface. Don't push down just yet. Make sure you want it where it is. I'm gonna aim for the center. Give it some pressure, and there you have it. Controller modded done four player admins right here. We got our controller. That's mostly it guys. We're gonna do the LED strip next. I'm also gonna show you guys the buttons. We're gonna be putting the logos, the little uh, stickers inside the buttons. But for now, controller's done. 
I had to do some final wiring as far as the admins. We had to wire up the admin buttons itself, but control panel is basically almost done. Let's do the LED strips next. Okay guys, so again, we're gonna start off LEDs. I'm gonna put my LED strip actually starting right here. We're gonna mount the controller, but right now I just have it plugged in. The biggest thing about these LED strips, you do have double-sided tape. The double-sided tape will never stick. After like minutes, it's gonna come off. So we, I staple them. If you look very carefully, we got staples. If you are gonna do the staple route, you have to go very slow. No lie, you gotta go slow. And I always suggest if you do uh, staple it, plug in your LED strip and leave it on white. White on LED strips activates RGB. Those are all three colors on to make it white. So it's best to make sure that you have it on and while you staple, basically if you miss a staple and you don't want to miss a staple, but if you somehow mess up the staple, you'll notice you messed up the strip if now it goes from white to like red. You don't want to staple into it. This is a very tedious task. Again, you see this, I'm playing with this. It's not coming out because I have a staple right there. So I always suggest stapling all my LEDs. I always do that. We're going down into the cabinet to give the cabinet some glow. If you want to open it, we're going to go straight into the control panel, across, back down. And then we have so much left over. We're going to just kind of wrap it with the back of this. Got our LEDs stapled in. Again, this is on white. Looks kind of blue, but it is white right now. Again, as you go down, R... G, B, if you ever do staple into it, like this might turn green instead while this is red. If you do that, you messed up the whole, not the whole thing. Basically every three inches is a cut point. You just cut it out and then you have to solder it. You gotta do some soldering. Now this part right here again, we're gonna go right here. This is gonna stay inside. I'm gonna give some slack this way in case you have to pull the control panel out. But basically now I'm gonna come here to the control panel and I'm gonna aim for right here, as close to this edge as possible, as close to the edge as possible. If you notice real quick, on the back of this, the LED strips here, I didn't go all the way to the edge because I can't get my staple gun here. So it has to come off about an inch. So it's not perfect. I know it's not perfect. Don't message me that it's not straight. I don't care, but at least I have room to staple it and this isn't gonna move. strip back down taking a look at it perfect that's it we got our underglow now we're gonna go back to the other side I have a lot of slack here so I'd rather do this this way in case you have to take the control panel out you have enough slack to take the control panel out this here I mean again we could probably snake it through somehow but at least we got that now we're gonna take this we're gonna just tape this and hit this with two stables. I'm gonna show you the LED trick. For my LED trick, you do need to know soldering. You need to solder. Um, I'm gonna take you close if I'm gonna do it first. Basically, you always wanna aim for one of these right here. The main connection that you could cut the LEDs. You wanna aim for one of these right here. We're gonna basically take the plastic coating off of this. You could use a blade, you have to be very careful though. You don't wanna cut into the LED strip. Basically, to take the clear coating off the LED strip. So once you got that off, now you have an exposed piece. This right now is the clear coatings off this. We now have to take our black and yellow and connect it. I'll tell you what wire goes to what. Okay, guys. So here's my secrets. Here we go. So we spliced it, and now we soldered our wiring right to the LED strip. Your black, which is your negative, the LED strips have a plus RGB. There's four terminals. Your black, your negative goes to the plus. Then your yellow is what activates the light, which I programmed to red. Okay, so check this out. I'm gonna set this to fade. And basically any time the LED strip gives off red, our buttons will light up. I didn't, I had to fix these on the inside. But anytime the LED strip gives us red, it'll fade in. So basically right now, if I put this on red, my buttons are lit. But if I put this on blue or green, our buttons are not lit. So as far as like when it goes into fade, you know, you got cayenne, you got all these colors. 
it activates the red. That's my LED secret. There you go. So this right now again is soldered. We have this cleanly soldered. I always finish this off with a glue gun. I always glue gun this to keep it in place. That's it guys, LED strip. We got our power supply for the buttons, the LED buttons, the LED lights is coming off of the LED strip. You could put it to the R, G, or the B. I put it to the red. Street Fighter, you know, red team molding if you were gonna do that custom route. But basically if you put this to red, anytime you put the cabinet to red, our LEDs will be static. Again, underglow is set. I just had to swap these out, meaning I have to spin the LEDs to it. Again, for you to do the LED strip hack, as far as connecting the buttons to the strip, you do need to know your soldering. We got it soldered. I always staple it in place so that this way, during transit, the wire doesn't move. But hot gluing this will be the ultimate key into making sure your buttons and your wires don't get disconnected. We're almost there, guys, 98%. We just have to do real quick the button stickers. Um, I could probably do this on a Photoshop file tutorial, but basically printouts, three quarter inch. You could do one inch, but it's kind of tight. I have my button stickers there. I'll show you guys real quick when we get to it. We're basically gonna pull the plastic out of the button and we're gonna put in the piece of paper, close up the button, and we're good. Let me fix up these LEDs while we wait for the glue to start. Basically it came now, we swapped our buttons. Basically you open up the button, you swap the LED to the opposite side, you gotta spin it, and now your buttons are good. We gotta do the four player admins, and we're almost there guys, almost there. Got our hot glue gun ready. We're gonna take this, and we're basically gonna dab this up. So we're gonna make this good. Make sure you wanna make sure it's tight. Again, you're better off the more you coat it, the more secure it is. LED light buttons to the LED strip is done. Took one of the buttons out. So basically again, you got your button, you're not. Basically here, this is gonna be my stop. I'm sorry, this is gonna be my exit. I went to Photoshop. I made a three and a quarter inch by three and a quarter inch square and I made my little thing. Basically with the button, you push down on the button you got the little white pegs. Squeeze a little bit gently. Don't break this. You're going to break it if you squeeze too much. Basically now, that pops out. Red cap. Exit button in. Recap it. Make sure you hear the click. The hardest thing now, not hardest thing, but the thing to keep in mind is that when you do put the spring, you want to keep the spring pressed. Make sure that we're going back in the right way. Both ends in. Let go of the spring. And now make sure, boom, that's it. That's how you do logos in the buttons. So something to keep in mind again, whenever you do these paper cutouts, which Game Room Solution does, does supply them, but I made my own, they will spin. I mean, you can't really not have it spin. The clear thing always spins, so it's always gonna spin. Deal with it. My paper that I do cut, it was three quarters, but it's too short. So I should have done an inch, but you have to get in between an inch and three quarters. 